had an incredible grasp of every aspect of a film technically. But his whole way of handling this was he did not show it. And he slightly would give the impression that uh, he would hide that, that he, he, he didn't know as much as he did. And I must have seen on at least two, maybe three occasions, an almost identical situation arising where someone really experienced would get into a technical dispute with him. And it would be something really detailed and technical, something about the camera or something. And the only times Stanley would ever get into an argument like that, I knew was when Stanley was right. And I remember thinking when you saw this happening, oh God, don't walk down, because he's going to make a complete fool of you. Because every time Stanley would know that this guy was wrong, the only time to get, get into a dispute, he wouldn't get into a dispute if he didn't know he was right. And I remember thinking, oh, do you go, no, don't, stop now. And um, the, the, the most classic occasion was in the dubbing theatre. And it was something which was changed at a very late stage because it kept on going wrong. And for some reason, it was one of those few occasions when I was there. And Wynne Ryder, this lovely guy who really experienced dubbing editor, one of the best in the country, who worked with David Lee, etc., etc., worked with Stanley on quite a few previous movies, um, had this big argument with Stanley about these telephone, these American telephone rings. And the gap between them is much longer in America, certainly in those days. And of course, uh, Stanley being American, straight away it sounds wrong to you, because it goes boom, 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 hell of a gap between, you know, and it was wrong. And I remember that came up, it was a dispute, one heard about it in the cutting room, that it was wrong, and it's got to be put right immediately. And then you know, I happened to be in the dubbing theatre when this wretched reel came up again, and Stanley went like this with his fist in the desk. He's saying, when? That's wrong. What, 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 you know, really cross. And, and Wynne's saying, no, it's right. I've corrected it. And it was to do with the number of frames between the beginning, I think, of each ring to the beginning of the next one. And I can remember exactly this day. It was a dispute whether it was 88 frames or 100 frames. And it was meant to be 100 frames. And Stanley said, that's 88 frames. And everyone in the dubbing sees us thinking, bloody hell, he's taking a gamble. How the hell can you tell whether that's 88 frames or 100 frames? And it was, uh, and, and Wynn, you know, who really well, knew his job and a complete expert, is saying to Stanley, no, that's 100 frames. And, 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 and it's like this contest between them. And anyhow, um, Stanley, typically slightly revving it, so leans forward the microphone to the, to the projection box. He said, is, is um, Adam, who's one of the assistants up there, um, I want him to take that reel off and wind it through on the synchronizer and tell me how many frames <laughs> it is. And we wait. And this message comes back after about five minutes, I think, because it took quite a long time to take it off and measure it. Um, 88 frames standing. And it, it was that secret. And then, oh, poor old Winston went berserk and he said, If you want me to give you a hundred rings, I'll give you a hundred rings, Stanley. He was completely mad and he stormed out of the room. Just as he's going out the door, Stanley turns around this smile and he says, A hundred frames, Win. He's saying a hundred rings. It was extraordinary.